All right, thanks for watching. And today we'll do another very classical limit. And what's amazing about this is that we'll do it without using any calculus. So let's show that the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the one over n equals one. And remember, at this point, we don't know what logarithms are, so all those things are completely taboo to us. How are we going to show this? So here's a proof. First of all, let Sn be n to the 1 over n minus 1. And the idea is we want to use the squeeze theorem. So we would like to squeeze this quantity between two functions that go to 0. Now, notice... Well, n is a natural number, so n is greater or equal to 1. So if you take nth roots, you get n to the 1 over n is greater or equal to 1 over 1 to the 1 over n, which is 1. So in particular, Sn, which is the difference between the two, it's non-negative. So on the one hand, Sn, it's greater or equal to 0. So we found our lower function. And all that's left to do is to find our upper function. But the cool thing is, notice, here we can actually solve for n. So we, what we have is, so sn plus 1 equals n to the 1 over n. So in particular, if you have n, if you raise this to the nth power, we get n equals sn plus 1 to the n. And... We can also write this as 1 plus Sn to the n. And the nice thing is, this is the perfect situation to apply the binomial theorem, which I've done in the previous video. And all that this says is, this is 1 to the n plus n times 1 to the n minus 1 times Sn. And now, unfortunately, we need the next term. So n times n minus 1 over 2, 1 to the n minus 2 sn squared plus some positive junk. And so this becomes 1 plus n sn plus n times n minus 1 over 2 sn squared plus again some positive junk. Now the thing is, well, 1 is positive, sn is not negative, so this is positive, and this is greater or equal to zero. So in other words, all this term becomes greater or equal to n times n minus one over two times Sn squared. So in other words, we can conclude that n, or if you'd like, even easier, so n times n minus one over two Sn squared, it's less than or equal to n. You see, because n becomes greater or equal to n times n minus 1 over 2 sn squared. And that's good. So it turns out this way we can solve for sn. Because what do we get? So the n cancels out, and then you get sn squared is less than or equal to 2 over n minus 1, and then sn is less than or equal to square root of 2 over n minus 1. So what do we get? We get that Sn, it's squeezed between square root of 2 over n minus 1 and 0. But this, you can just show that it goes to 0 by a standard uh, limiting argument. This, I hope you believe, also goes to 0, so by the squeeze theorem. We get that the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn equals 0. And if you remember what Sn is, but since Sn equals just the difference n to the 1 over n minus 1, we get that the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the 1 over n equals 1. So in other words, the difference goes to zero, therefore this goes to this. So we are done. And the nice thing is, there's a beautiful consequence upon this. Namely, there's a corollary as well. 
actually even more important than this one. So if A is positive, then not N to the one over N, but really A to the one over N equals one. For instance, it will be using this argument, it's true that two to the one over N goes to one as N goes to infinity. And how do we show this? Well, I believe you just do it by cases, first of all. So why? Well, so either A is greater or equal to one or it's less than one. So if A is greater or equal to one, then what we get is A to the one over N, it's greater or equal to one to the one over N and that becomes one. So a to the n is greater or equal to one, but also but also, if n is large enough, what does large enough mean in this case n is greater or equal to a, then uh, a to the one over n, it's less to equal to n to the one over n, just by taking nth roots. So what we get is a to the one over n, it's squeezed between one and n to the one over n. And by the previous result, we know this goes to one and this goes to one. So by the squeeze theorem, Again, we then get a to the one over n goes to one, which is exactly uh, what we wanted to show. So, yeah. <laughs> that was if a is greater or equal to one, and if it's less than one, so case two, if a is between zero and one, then there's this really neat trick that limit n goes to infinity of a to the n, that's the limit as n goes to infinity of one over one over a to the n. And that becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of one to the n over one over a to the n and then by the ratio of limits, that's the limit as n goes to infinity of one over the limit as n goes to infinity of one over a to the n. But here's the thing, if a is less than one, then uh, one over a, it's greater than one. So then by case one, we get that this becomes one over one. That was case one and that becomes one. So in either case, we get that the limit is one. How cool is that? All right, thank you very much.